All right, so it's Mr. Blah Blah himself. I recall this guy has like 18 pages of dialogue or something. At least that's the way it seems. Maybe he doesn't, but he looks hideously familiar. Anyway, I am Uriel, ascended of the House of Dane. Are you the ones that are releasing the dogs? Stop! And acting Eldar in command of this fortress. Why is fortress capitalized? Is it Fort Fortress? <laughs> That'd be stupid. It's almost like naming your kid William Williams. Which has happened in the past. There are people named that. Anyway, tell me. What errand compels you to travel to the forest lands of the Elven Nation? I seek the wizard Emindor. Hmm. I've heard that the wizard Emindor is not well these days and has taken refuge in the great tower of Arendale. Would that be a wizard's tower, perchance? Don't wizards normally spend time in their towers? Hmm. I don't know. It seems like a trend. Arendale is on the road that runs west of this fortress, built high among the mountain cliffs along the river. Outsiders are advised to travel there first and petition the Elven Council for what they seek. But they're not allowed in there anyway, so you can't petition them. It's a bit of a loophole in the system that we greatly enjoy because we don't have to deal with any outsiders. Except you. As some of the tribal houses will meet any trespass of their ancestral lands with hostility. And outside their lands. Because I'm pretty far away and those Dray Elves are attacking me, so... I don't think they're following the rules. The Elven Council resides in Erin... Oh my goodness, this is very, very, very basic. Outsiders. That's me! Outsiders from the human lands and beyond are no longer welcome in the Elven Nation. For wherever they go, war and treachery are certain to follow. Yes, we're beyond war and treachery. We don't kill people, they merely die and have arrows sticking in them for no reason. It's a very big subject of confusion. Maybe you should look toward your own kin. Maybe they're firing elven arrows at you. Oh boy. Human lands. Yes, okay. Fargrove is human land. Okay. Follow the road e- uh, I, I kind of know where Fargrove is. Oh, it's soon to befall. Tragedy. I wonder why. I've heard the rumor of the House of Dre will soon side against Far Grove, like it already has, and the ill-fated lord who rules there. More of this I cannot say, because I'm secretly hoping they'll win. I'm very racist towards humans. <gasps> Him, not me. The House of Dre. Were they rappers? I, I, I stop. I gotta stop asking that question. The House of Dre still follows the ancient elven tribal law, but that's a lie, and makes alliances as it will. If the Dre have sided against Fargrove, you do well to keep wary of them. By killing them! Got it. I fear you won't be able to visit the Great Tower, for without permission from the elven council, no one may pass its enchanted walls. So it is a wizard's tower. Mm, I've heard that the wizard Emondor is not well these days, and it... You've already said that. The Elven Nation is the alliance of blah 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 and tribes, guided by wisdom and snobbishness. This fortress serves to safeguard our borders from all outsiders. No one may pass unless they travel upon official business of the Elven Council. Or of the mark of favor like you do. The noble house of Dane serves to protect the borders of the elven nation from all outsiders. Except you. Or Dane favor. Only one blessed by elven ancestral spirit. Blessed by an, elf, an elven ancestral spirit receives the mark of ordained favor. Okay, I read that wrong. I must have gone cross-eyed for a moment. This portends that you will undertake a special quest. Oh, I see how this is going. In service to the Elven Nation, would you like to buy a timeshare? What is this special quest? And no, I don't want a damn timeshare. Perhaps 
The mark of ordained favor is a sign you will undertake a special quest for me. For free! I, for I need someone of strength and courage to embark upon a mission of great danger and ill omen. Because I am old and lazy. Oh, here we go. Does everybody have their exposition helmets on? No? Okay, fine. If you get exposition to the brain, don't come crying to me. Long ago, there lived among us a despised wizard whose name was Malokan. Why does that sound like a bad guy from an anime? They say his powers spawned from dark incantations. Shock! Forbidden secrets he had stolen from ancient scrolls of the elven masters. They shouldn't have written down forbidden secrets, but they did it anyway. I told them not to, but they're too stupid. I'm the only smart one. He was evil to the bone. Vicious and cruel, his demeanor so vile that none would dare approach him. For he stank horribly. Maybe he had too many beans. Then one day he was gone and all silently prayed he would not return. I'm hearing a but. But several months later he reappeared and proclaimed to all he had taken a wife. A beautiful maiden of virtuous heart. She was too good for him. He built her a magnificent house in the forest lands of the great northern lake. But despite this prize, it was easy to see the anguish and sorrow she carried upon her face. I wonder why. Yet no one could reason her consent to marry such a hideous man. I wonder why. Dark magic. It's, it's just a guess. Yet she obediently served him and spoke not a word of her true grief until the night the gypsies of... The gypsies? Okay. <laughs> That's a bit strange, but let's roll with it. Sure. The gypsies gathered in a great ring encircling Malokan's house and began to sing an unusual song. Kumbaya, Malo... No. Soft at first, but which quickly grew to a deafening frenzy. So, they started Woodstock in his front yard. Yeah, I'd be pretty pissed too. They say that the chant was in tones so strange that its music would make ordinary men fall to madness. Okay. Yet the gypsies seemed unaffected, and shortly Malakon's wife ran outside, tightly embracing one of the chanting men. Uh, I see where this is going. The gypsies lit bonfires at each door of the house, as Malokan just sat there and watched from a high above an aspire window and began to invoke evil incantations and very, very foul phrases. You smell like poo -poo. That's what I imagine him saying, at least. But though he screamed until his lungs were bleeding in hopes of dispelling the chanting throng, instead of just getting out of the damn house like a normal human being, the disturbed harmonies of the gypsies possessed greater volume still. Because they turned up their speakers. And all of Malakan's shouts and curses were to no avail. His dark spells failed and failed until his voice was strained and cracked by his bleeding lungs. Whispers oh, <laughs> strained into cracked whispers. All the while the frenzy gypsies chanted into the night, singing their bizarre songs. Oh, <laughs> I was just making up stuff, but apparently I was reading the lines without knowing it. As Malakan's house went ablaze! You can tell I'm really into the story. When the sun arose the next morning, the, the next morning? <laughs> the next morning, the gypsies and Malakan's wife were gone. Where once had stood Malakan's house, there remained only smoldering ash. Where once had grown a resplendent forest, now all was transformed into barren wasteland. It does sound like one of those concerts. <laughs> uh, that should have been an end to this tragedy, but there is more! And you know, I'm not saying anything bad about like Woodstock or Burning Man or whatever, but I imagine if someone had this big rock concert, there'd be a lot of trash left behind and things probably would be a little bit trampled because things went crazy. I'M NOT SAYING ANYTHING MEAN ABOUT THOSE! 
One year to the night that Malachan and his house were burned to the ground, on that very spot of now barren earth, where once they stood, a strange stone sprouted from the ground. That's a very strange sentence. You know, you could really condense this statement and... I, I don't know. The local mages were consulted and agreed that the stone was unnatural, because stones don't sprout from the ground usually. Pretending of some lingering evil that yet remained from Malakan's curses that fateful eve. They call it the Devil's Moon, for the stone is not unlike the Devil's Moon in the sky. Okay, that sounds weird. Exactly as it appeared the night that Malakon was burned alive, and since the stone first appeared, when once per year the moon in the sky be- Wait, and since the moon first appeared, when once per year the- Okay, so... I think you're high. When once per year the moon in the sky becomes again the devil's moon, they say that Malakan's evil spirit arises and stalks the land in search of his lost wife. And now, on the morning that follows each anniversary of that night, a young elven maiden is found at the foot of the evil stone, cold, pale, and lifeless, murdered by the fiend. Your, your words are making, like, progressively less and less sense. It sounds like you're trying to, like, expand your sentences when they have very little substance. You could say, like, yo, there was a dude that was evil. She took a wife with dark, or he took a wife with dark magic. Then he was burnt out by the wife's true love. But then he came back and started killing people. And now I would like you to stop him. I mean... Is it that simple? You have been talking for ages! A dark power still binds Malakan's spirit to this world, but I believe I have uncovered a way to dispel the curse. If Malakan's spirit can be aroused before the Devil's Moon rises, I believe it can be defeated, and the dark power binding it revealed. I have mixed a special powder to arouse Malakan's dormant spirit within the Evil Stone. I'm not even making any comments about that. Take the magic powder to, and travel to the barren lands south of the Great Northern Lake. Find the Devil's Moon and the Sinister Stone that marks the site. Is there just like a moon floating in the forest or something? <laughs> That'd be kind of disturbing, actually. Where once stood Malakan's house. Sprinkle the powder upon the accursed stone to awaken Malakan's spirit. Disturbed prematurely, he will be weak and vulnerable and you should be able to easily defeat him. Search for some dire artifact, for where there must be a talisman that continues to bind his spirit to our world. Without the talisman that empowers him, his spirit can never return to haunt our lands and slay the daughters of elven men. Is that why you want him slain? Did he slay your daughter? What is your connection to this? I am actually genuinely curious. We have a quest. Find the Devil's Moon south of the... When you've defeated Malakan's spirit and obtained the dark artifact, bring it to me, for such magic is too dangerous and must be destroyed. Or used. <laughs> I mean, yes, destroyed. Do not fail to defeat Malakan, or you will die. For once disturbed, he will not rest until another young maiden has lost her life. Oh, so more of the same. Good fortune in your journey, and may our elven ancestors watch over you in this quest. Now get out of my tent. That has... Like, no bed or anything. We just sit when we sleep. Or we don't sleep at all, because we're NPCs. They call it the Devil's Moon, for the evil stone is not unlike the Devil's Moon. So, do you just have a regular moon and then a Devil's Moon? Or is there just a Devil's Moon that's above the forest or something? Like, there's two, but there's like this bowling ball-sized rock that floats in the air. I don't know, that'd be a bit creepier than the moon suddenly transforming as soon as you enter the area. Like, I bet it's going to do. The Great Northern Lake is called by some the Lost Lake, <laughs> which is the lake that you swam in earlier to do that other quest. Follow the river north of Arendale to reach its shores. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot of exposition. In fact, it was 15 minutes of it, and I think that's a good place to end the set. Seems like it might be a little bit short. Uh, I don't know. But... 
quite frankly, I've had enough of Mr. Talky Talks. Uh, next time I might not read it out or whatever. It depends on you, uh, you viewers. Either way. Mm, and I do remember that this quest is a bit of a bastard, if I remember correctly. I think it's actually really hard, and they don't tell you that. I don't know. We'll see it in the next set. How about that? And I actually know where it is, too. It's in that green section that's just below that big Orion's Belt or Upside Down Skull Island, I guess. Yeah. We'll be going there. We might just, uh, yeah, we'll take our way through Arendelle, I guess. I don't know. Ugh, that was a lot of talking. Blech. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this set, and I will see you later. Stay fancy, everybody. Do, 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 do. Fancy, fancy and far grove.